This video will cover the diagnosis of ARDS, or Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. This video will be based on the Berlin definition, which was released in 2012. Some of the changes in the new Berlin definition include the, the diagnosis of ARDS on a spectrum instead of based on stratification. What does that mean? Well, lung injury can be thought of as mild to severe. Before the Berlin definition, acute lung injury was the terminology for kind of more of the mild uh, respiratory distress, while ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, was classified more on the severe side. The new Berlin definition took out the acute lung injury diagnosis and instead place the, the definition of ARDS on more of the spectrum. So there's a mild form of ARDS, a moderate form, and a severe form. So that's what we'll cover in this video. Now for the criteria for diagnosing ARDS, you must include all of the following. Symptoms must begin within one week of the original insult, or symptoms become worse in the last week. This criteria means that the insult has to be recent. The lung changes and the respiratory distress has to be an acute onset within one week. The second criteria means that the lung injury cannot be caused by other means, such as cardiogenic origin. What does that mean? Well, when, heart, when the heart fails, so the, the heart cannot contract um, efficiently and pump blood to the body, the fluid instead of going to the body is going to back up into the lungs. This is going to cause pulmonary edema and congestion and that can mimic ARDS. However, by definition, ARDS means that the heart cannot be the culprit for fluid in the lungs. The third criteria means that you need to have some sort of radiologic confirmation that there is pulmonary edema. So you can see bilateral opacities on chest x-ray or chest CT. So it's going to demonstrate pulmonary edema or fluid within the lungs. And then lastly, we need to figure out how are we going to stratify ARDS. Now, let's figure out how to stratify ARDS. So if all of our three other criteria are met, it's not heart origin, it happened within one week, and uh, it's, it's confirmed via radiologic studies, how are we going to stratify our ARDS? Well, we need to take into account some calculations. The stratification is based off of the PaO2 to FiO2 ratio. What does that mean? Well, the PaO2 is going to be your pressure of arterial oxygen. So you need a blood gas, an arterial blood gas sample. The blood gas is going to show the pH the PaCO2, the PaO2, the bicarb, and the base excess or the base deficit. What we're concerned about is the PaO2. This is going to be our pressure that oxygen exerts off of our blood sample of arterial blood. Our FiO2 is going to stand for the fraction of inspired O2 or fraction of inspired oxygen. Sitting here, I'm in the Midwest of the United States, uh, our average FiO2 is about 0.21, meaning that we have the atmosphere and we're breathing in gases. So everybody is right now breathing in gases, hopefully. Most of the atmosphere is going to be made of nitrogen. However, there are other elements such as oxygen and then trace amounts of like CO2 and other trace gases. The amount of oxygen that I am inspiring or breathing in right now is about 21%. So if the atmosphere is made up of 100% of gas, which it is, 21% of that gas that I'm breathing in is oxygen. So our FiO2 right now would be calculated at 0.21 or 21%. Now, if a patient is on a ventilator, for example, we can control their FiO2 that they breathe in. So are we gonna give them just atmospheric, like room air oxygen, which would be 0.21, or are we gonna supplement oxygen? Are we gonna give them 100% oxygen? 
because 100% oxygen would be 1.00. We could give them 50% oxygen, so 0 0.5, so they're breathing in 50% oxygen and 50% other gases. So that's kind of what the FiO2 means. So the risk stratification of our ARDS is going to be based on our blood gas sample and our inspired oxygen content. So it's going to be your PaO2 divided by your FiO2. That is going to give you a number. And also to take into account, you have to have a PEEP, a positive end expiratory pressure of at least five. Now, why do we have to have a PEEP? Well, this was thrown into the new Berlin definition in 2012. My thought is because if you have atelectasis, which means you have collapsed airways, you have alveoli within the lungs, which kind of serve as little balloon sacs. If those collapse, they're not gonna participate in oxygen exchange. So how do we know that atelectasis is causing our respiratory distress versus our inability to oxygenate because of fluid on the lungs. So if we introduce a PEEP, some pressure at the end of expiration, we're gonna prevent or at least minimize the amount of atelectasis within the lung, the amount of collapse. So then we can figure, well, if we don't have collapse going on, maybe it's because we're unable to oxygenate because we have fluid on the lung. So we have three different categories of ARDS, mild, moderate, and severe. Our mild uh, ARDS is going to involve values of our PaO2 to FiO2 ratio of more than 200, but less than 300. So anywhere between 200 and 300, and I guess it's um, equal to or less than 300 would be the exact definition, with a PEEP of five is going to be classified as mild ARDS. Our moderate is going to be 100 to 200, so it's equal to or less than 200. And then lastly, our severe definition of ARDS is going to be anything less than 100 or equal to 100. So what I'm talking about is we calculate our PaO2 ratio to FiO2 ratio, and if it is somewhere between 200 to 300, we have mild ARDS. 100 to 200 is going to be moderate, and less than 100 is severe. Now, as you become progressively worse, so as you go from mild to moderate to severe, your chance of mortality increases. So if you have severe ARDS, the mortality rate, the risk of dying is actually fairly high. While if you have mild ARDS, you still do have a good risk of, of mortality of dying. However, your risk is a lot less if you were classified then as severe. So let's do some examples. Um, what is a normal PaO2? A normal PaO2, so let's say you draw a blood gas off of me. I'm a, I'm a healthy male. Um, right now, my blood gas should be somewhere between 70 to 100. So that's the pressure that oxygen is exerting within my blood. So my normal PaO2 is 70 to 100. And what did I say my FiO2 was? Well, it's 0 0.21. Um, so let's, let's do an example here. I'm sitting here in my room. What I'm doing is I'm breathing in oxygen. Let's say my PaO2 is 90. So I'm, I'm within normal range. So let's say my PaO2 is 90. My FiO2, since I'm not wearing any supplemental oxygen, I'm just breathing atmospheric air my FiO2 is gonna be 0.21, so 21%. So 90 divided by 0.21 is going to be 428.6. Looking back to our, our examples, I fall nowhere in this range. Therefore, I am going to be normal. I do not have ARDS at the moment. Perfect. However, let's do some other calculations. Let's say you have a patient who you draw blood gas and they are found to be on a PaO2 of 110. The pressure exerted by oxygen in the bloodstream is 110, I believe, millimeters mercury. Now we need to figure out what their inspired oxygen is. Well, let's say that they're on minimal vent setting. So they're breathing in 40% oxygen or 0.4 for their FiO2. That means that 
they're being supplemented with some extra oxygen. If they're just breathing room air, they'd be uh, FiO2 of 0.21. However, we're gonna give them some extra oxygen. Therefore, we would expect that the amount of oxygen in their bloodstream would be higher. There will be more oxygen in their bloodstream, meaning their pressure of oxygen in their bloodstream would be higher. However, is it gonna be adequate? Like, is our response going to be enough? Well, let's do the math. 110 divided by 0.4 is going to be 275. 275 falls between 200 and 300. Therefore, this person has mild ARDS. Let's just think about this for a second. If a normal individual was breathing in an oxygen content of 40% O2, so they are being supplemented with extra oxygen, and I'm telling you that if their PaO2 is 110, their, their FiO, PaO2 to FiO2 ratio is less than expected. A normal person would have somewhere higher than 110. However, if we're discussing this particular patient, they have a ratio of 275. That means that we can classify them as mild ARDS as long as we rule out other causes, as long as their radiology confirms the diagnosis happened within a week and their PEEP is at least five. Now, let's do another example. Let's say we have a patient whose PaO2 measures 95 and they are on 85% oxygen. What do they have? Well, 95 divided by 0.85 is going to be 111, and this is going to be moderate ARDS. And remember, moderate is going to be 100 to 200, including 200. So this is going to be moderate ARDS. And lastly, for, for completeness sake, let's say we have a PaO2 of 80, and they are on 100% oxygen. So 100% oxygen is going to be 1.00 because we're representing this as a fraction. This is going to be give a, uh, a ratio of 80, which is going to be less than 100. This person has severe ARDS. So we have a normal individual, normal calculation. We have a mild, moderate, and severe. This patient right here, this hypothetical patient, has the highest risk of mortality. All right, if you have any questions, be sure to ask. Otherwise, I appreciate any comments or feedbacks you may have. Thank you.